but I, I need to try and start getting back into things and doing a little bit more and even if like I just spend 10 more minutes doing things every day I need to start doing things and I, I also can't beat myself up if one day I don't do anything or I don't do anything for a week it's just not because I'm lazy it's because I'm struggling and you know it's easy for me to go and sit on my bed and I could be sat there for four hours and it feels like 10 minutes that's just the way it is with depression and it's not because I'm lazy but I am getting a little bit more and more done I'm not getting a massive amount of done compared to what I could do or what I have done in the past but I'm going to try and maybe spend an hour a day or two hours in just getting things done I'm going to include the shopping and the traveling time in that as well so that's do two and a half hours because the traveling time is between 20 and 30 minutes depending on traffic and traffic lights and all of that and I spend about half an hour in the shop so that's an hour so I want to spend like an hour another hour and maybe half an hour editing videos so that's two and a half hours a day it probably ends up more I'm probably doing more than I'm thinking at the moment but it's hard to get into a routine and also like I don't want to have a structured routine because I might spend one morning really down and in the afternoon feel okay and get stuff done and then at night feel down again so I don't want to tell myself I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and have a structured routine but I'd like to walk my dog every night I want to get to the point and I've never been able to do this even when I was okay before to just go out in the mornings and walk the dog as well and I don't mean every morning I mean start small like maybe try for once a fortnight or something like that and I know it won't be any time soon because I'm struggling leaving the house during the daytime especially like with the dog but eventually I will get there it'll just take a lot of time because the little bit of confidence I gained has been knocked and even though I seem to be very confident with the police I don't know why but I don't know why they probably think I'm really confident but I'm not I'm normally crapping myself half the time when I'm talking to them because I'm always waiting for something bad to be said but yeah I'm just gonna just take each day as it comes and I don't know I still want to talk to a certain female officer but I'm sick of fighting for that now I mean she's upset me the last couple of days so I don't know I just feel like we both have things we need to say and my dad said that to me as well he feels like we both have things we need to say to one another and then things would be better I guess I don't know the traffic's quite busy for this time in the morning I mean it's going up for three in the morning there's like loads of cars and I'm sat here like I originally went out to go to Asda to get petrol and when I got there it's like petrol station calls and I'm like why is it calls it's self-serve but maybe because I'm not allowed to serve food or whatever in the shop until Monday um maybe that's why they can't have petrol for sale I don't know because my petrol light came on super early like I only put petrol in I think I put petrol in Monday or diesel but I normally do it on Wednesdays but I think it got quite low again because I'm doing a lot of miles going to Tesco and back every day and I've been going out for drives and stuff at night and not massively long drives like I'm not going too far and then I'm going to Asda a couple of times a week even on days when I've gone to Tesco so I've gone from doing an average of 25 miles a week to doing between 100 and 200 a week and in February I did a thousand miles and I went to um, Devon and back and that was like 600 miles and then I did some miles when I was down there but my miles is going up on my car and I wanted to keep it super low because it's better when I exchange it like the first year that I had this I did something like 4,000 miles but I think this year I've probably done three already which is a lot because you know the higher the miles the less the car is valued at when you part x and i'm not even in the position to part x when i planned like i was gonna part x when i'd had it 18 months which is like the last week of may and now it's like i think that's like six weeks off and there's absolutely no chance because i needed to have saved quite a large deposit towards because obviously i'm going upwards with my car not downwards in value um so i'm no longer in the position to change my car when i wanted unless i get something of similar value or less and I don't want to do that obviously I want to go upwards so I think I'm going to have to set myself a goal of having this for around two years in total and 
you know, that'll give me another six months plus the six weeks, so that's seven and a half months to try and sort my life out and get the amount of money I want for the sort of car I want. And even, like, I'm not 100% sure what car I want, which helps, because if I knew what car I wanted, I'd probably be quite upset about it. But I've been bored with this car since I had it about three months, and there's things I absolutely love about it, and it looks amazing, and obviously I bought it for the looks as well as the performance, and, you know, I was happy with it, but this side bit here, the mirror, well, this bit, when I'm going around corners and stuff, it obscures the view a little bit, and... I'd bought it and then my brother told me about that as I'd already signed for it. I'd already, like, signed my car over. I know I didn't, I didn't have it in my possession for another 10 days, but I owned it, so I couldn't say no deal. Um, and that's a bit of a pain, and I'm just bored of it. Like, I'm such a car fan, there's so many cars I want, but I want to go upwards, and I was going to get a 3 Series BMW, but they've stopped making them. Because I wanted it to be three years old and if I got it, it would be four years old now because they stopped making them. So I don't really know what I want. Well, I know what my dream car is and I'm not in that position. But there was other cars that I wanted and now I don't really know what I want. And it's probably because I'm down and like I don't know what I want in general anyway. So it is good that I don't know what car I want. And yes, I drive along the road and I'm like, oh my God, I want that car and I want that car and that car and that car. And I see my dream car around a lot because... It seems to be very popular, but people are buying the very basic models of it, which I could probably be in the position to do in six months' time. But I don't want the basic model, A, because it's slower than this, and it doesn't have all the extras on that I'd want if I got that car, because, you know, I don't want the basic model. I mean, all these people are buying the basic model, and they go, I've got a Range Rover Volk, there you go, I've told you my dream car. And they're just driving around in the basic 20 grand model, like 20... Well, they're paying around 20 grand for it, but it was probably like 28, 30 when it was new and people are getting them like three, four years old now because that's what they're coming up as. And they're, they're spending about 20 grand and they're getting them on finance and it's the slower and the sluggish and they don't have the extras that I would want. I mean, I want the £55,000 one, but I'm not going to buy a brand new one. I'm going to get one around three years old and... Um, it's still going to be a lot of money at three years old, but I'm not in the position, even as my next car for that, I had a goal of getting it at the end of next year, but because I've took the last six months out of life and not earned very much, and I'm earning less and less because of my depression and everything that's going on, I probably won't be in the position at the end of next year, but that was my goal. At the end of next year, I would own the car, that I, my dream car. And I've never actually test drove it, so I may never like it, but I don't want to go and test drive it because if I absolutely love it and I can't afford it, I'm going to be absolutely devastated. So unless I've actually got the money to buy it, I won't test drive it. So I may test drive it, you know, 18 months from now and absolutely hate it. But I will, but in case I love it, I want to be able to be in the position that if I did love it, I'd have the money because I don't want to hurt my feelings, I guess, by test driving something, loving it and not quite having the money for it. But I've wanted that car since it first came out four years ago and I'm like, I want that car, I want that car. Like, I would do absolutely anything for that car, but one step at a time and like,